Whoa, hello again everyone. Oh no, not another flipping diesel heater video I hear you saying. Well, yes, yes it is. I'm not quite ready to give up on this yet. I've had lots and lots of comments from you on the last diesel heater video where we just couldn't get it to fire up properly again. And there were lots and lots of suggestions a lot of people were pointing towards the battery and saying uh, is the battery not fully charged is the battery old is the battery no good so uh, i'll have a quick look at that and explain what i've done there uh, lots of people were not liking my knob uh, lots of people think i should replace the knob with the digital controller so you can set the pump rate and uh, tune the sort of heater up a little bit and yeah that's a good point but i know quite a few people are running satisfactorily with the knob um so i'm reluctant to just keep throwing parts at it in the hope that something cures the problem a few people have asked about bends in the exhaust and things it has only got really the one bend in it it's nowhere near 90 degrees and it does flow pretty much downhill the whole way so uh, I'm fairly certain that's not an issue and some people of course are saying that it still needs the sort of sitting in that hidden gauze thing and that was what I was thinking I was going to do next but there is another suggestion which is going to be easier to try now both George from the George and Jane channel and uh, Paul Glover have got in touch with me and said don't turn it all the way up before you press the on button. Just press the on button and let it do its thing and uh, there's been a suggestion that it should start up in number three and then you turn it up later. So that I think is going to be the first thing I try. But first, let's have a quick pop out and I'll show you the battery. So there we go, there is uh, the battery it's wired to. It's the van's leisure battery. I haven't wired it into the actual vehicle battery, which uh, sits over there. It's a uh, 110 amp hour battery and it's relatively new. I think we bought it this year. As I recall, I think we bought it before our trip up to Scotland. So. It's, it's a new battery this year and it's been treated well. It's not been flattened or anything like that. And I believe it's in pretty good condition. I've got it on charge. You can see it's charging up at the moment. So uh, yeah, I believe all is good on the battery front. Now it's been suggested that before I try this, I disconnect the power to the heater completely. So I'll give it a hard reset. So I'll take the cover off, unplug it, leave it for about 10 seconds and plug it back in again. Probably leave the cover off just in case it doesn't work and I have to go further. <laughs> right, so I'm not gonna touch the knob at all and I'm just going to press the on button. And so it's actually gone on to the number nine setting, weirdly. Yeah, we've got a bit of smoke coming out again. Is it going to actually fire up? How are the repairs going? Uh, well, I don't know, is it right? It's not gone into fault yet, actually. I can smell the smoke. Yeah, it's not blowing out very hot. But it hasn't gone into a fault code yet. Hmm. 
You're a bit I, cynical about this diesel. I am later. hugely cynical. I did some research before you even started putting one in, and uh, I'm afraid it didn't come out on top. I send you some link to some ones that I preferred. Yeah, but this one was way cheaper. Not in time, value, and actually use. No. But it was cheaper. In pennies, yes. In parts, I think it's actually now coming close to what we actually I found on the um, that was recommended by so many recommending people. Recommending people. Yes. Ah, oh, the old recommending people. The old recommending people. They always know best, don't they? Um, they had done an awful lot of research, and I actually did the research on the research. Yeah. I did a lot of research. I looked at which was the cheapest one. On eBay. Yeah. Hmm. No, it's gone into a fault code again. Oh dear. Well, I guess some of you might be saying that's because the battery isn't fully charged. Uh, so maybe I'll leave that to fully charge and then just try once more. But honestly, what is the point of something that will only work under absolute optimal conditions? Uh, I'm more of a fan of robust stuff that works whatever, really. Anyway, let's... Uh, let it charge up and then try once more. Right, well it's much much later, in fact it's uh, very dark but you can see the battery is now fully charged. Right, I'm going to disconnect the power and reset it again the same as before. Right, let's try it, turn it on. So it's actually started on a lower setting, it seems to start on whatever setting you leave it on. Right, wonder what's going to happen. Now it is smelling pretty diesely out here, and it's uh, still blowing pretty cold out of the uh, vent. No, I'm afraid we've gone back to the fault code on that. The uh, error flashing lights. Oh well, it was a nice thought, but uh, I don't think just pressing the on button is going to really fix the problem here. Well, it's a couple of weeks later now. I had that uh, trip away to Surrey where I stayed in the pub car park where I really could have done with the heat. It wasn't too cold, I did manage to get by without too much discomfort, but yeah, the weather's really turning now, so it would be nice to get that heater working. And we have got one more thing to try, really. Uh, well, maybe a couple more things, but there's one thing in particular I want to try, which is this idea of this hidden gauze at the bottom of the combustion chamber that needs cleaning. So the first thing I've got to do really is get the diesel heater out of the van again. So I'm afraid it's back under the van, disconnect anything, and get the heater out again. Yes, uh, don't worry Mr Safety Owl, I'll be sure to wear my safety glasses under the van. old weather out there to be rolling around under the van. You can see one of the securing nuts that hold the diesel heater to the turret plate has uh, brought the stud out with it so uh, yeah we'll have to free that off I think before we put the heater back in. Anyhow now I should be able to take my cover off and lift the heater out. That's odd, why is this uh, not coming out? It seems quite stuck down. Have I forgotten to undo something? No, I've checked under the van and everything is definitely undone as before, so this should just pop off. I wonder if uh, 
something's got a bit hot and stuck down maybe. No, everything looks okay. I guess it was just a bit tight. Right, now I'm going to take the heater to the garage and disassemble it to get that combustion chamber out. You've seen me do that before, so let's just crack on with it. So there we go, I've got the burner chamber out and uh, yeah, in there where it goes does look a bit sooty again, although nowhere near as bad as it was. But the legends that circulate deep in the hidden corners of the internet speak of a hidden gauze, a mysterious hidden gauze that lurks right down there in the bottom of the combustion chamber where you can see um, that hole and of course what people say is that you can't really clean it because you can't get to it I think it must be behind this plate which is riveted on so the story goes that you can clean it by giving it a good soak in oven cleaner and then a good long go in an ultrasonic bath so that's what I'm gonna try now Nikki has gone out for a walk with her sister so I've gone in the house and had a look to see if I can find some oven cleaner but I know she's got some somewhere I just cannot find it anywhere I've looked in all the cupboards and stuff uh, I think she knew I needed it and she's hidden it away anyway I'm gonna have to go to the shops and buy some Well, here we are back at base, and uh, let's have a look at the instructions on the oven cleaner. Uh, read entire label before removing cap. Well, I'm not wearing a cap today, so uh, that should be okay. Uh, wear rubber gloves and protect arms while spraying. So, yeah, nasty stuff apparently. It says on here it contains caustic soda, so yeah, that is going to be pretty aggressive. Uh, so basically it's just saying to spray it everywhere from 20 to 30 centimeters um, close the oven door and allow to work for no more than 30 minutes well the good folk on the internet suggest soaking it overnight uh, i haven't actually got that much time to get this sorted out i'm back at work tomorrow so um probably i'll leave it while i have my lunch i guess is probably the thing so anyway let's uh, crack on and give this a soak in this. I'm gonna spray some in here as well. Now, nah, safety first, of course. Let's leave that to work its chemically magic while I have some lunch. Well, that's lunch over. I've got myself my ultrasonic cleaning bath out, so uh, we can have a go at putting that combustion chamber in there. Now I'm going to use brake cleaner as recommended by the internet. So here we go back out in the garage and the uh, combustion chamber is looking no different really just a bit bubbly. Right so let's uh, put the chamber in here. It's going to have to that's all right, it goes in there quite nicely. Now, this is a heated bath. Let's turn it on. This is a heated bath, but of course, 
the brake cleaner is flammable, so I don't want to have it too hot. So I think I'm going to set the heat to um, maybe. Well, it's going down, going the wrong way. I don't, know, I don't really want it to freeze, do I? I'm going to set it to 30, I think. And I want the duration to be nice and long, so I think the longest I can set it is half. I'm going down again. The longest I can set it is 30 minutes, I think. Yeah, just go straight back. Yeah. So. Let's turn the heat on and let's give it a, a go, eh? Well, while that's going on in the house, I'm going to have a bit of a clean up of this main unit thing. I'm going to go and rinse it off under the outside tap because it's literally just a lump of aluminium at this point. Well, I don't know if that looks clean, but certainly it's a lot better than it was. Well, while that's... Uh all drying off and uh, the old sonic bars are going. I'll just see if I can release this nut. No. Oh, it's quite. There we go, that's got it. Alright, let's uh, thread that back in there. A bit with two nuts locked together, I think. There we go, hopefully that'll do the trick. Well in the meantime the cycle has finished on the ultrasonic bath and it does look like it's loosened up some dirt so I'm going to give it another go through. Well there we go I think that's probably enough I'll uh, take this out and then take it back to the garage clean it up a bit, wipe it down. It does look like we've got quite a bit of muck out of it. And just to confirm, the gauze is still in the glow plug hole, as it should be, and uh, the little air admittance hole is clear. Now in anticipation of giving this a try later, I've connected up the battery to the battery charger, but the battery charger is actually saying that the battery is already full, so we should be good on the battery front. Now I really want to get this back together and try it, but of course I did run this under the tap and uh, this has been in the bath with the brake cleaner, so I'm just going to dry them off thoroughly with the hot air gun so there's no excuse really for them not to start because they're wet. Right, let's get this back together.
Right, let's go and fit this back in the van, shall we? Right, let's connect the uh, power up. Well, what do you reckon? Will she start? I'm just gonna press the on button like George suggested. I'm not gonna turn it all the way up. Absolutely nothing happening yet. Right, I've uh, heard the pump starting. Now we have got a bit of smoke. Oh, I can hear it trying to fire. Uh, still just blowing cold air in here. Ah, the bastard thing's gone flash it into an error code again. Uh, well, I've disconnected the power to it and reset it, and uh, I'm gonna have one more go, just in case that was a bit of a problem starting it up. No, back on the error code again. Most disheartening. Well, folks. That's a bit of a disappointing end to the video, I'm afraid. Um, I believe I've tried everything that people have suggested with the exception of the new controller, the digital controller rather than the knob panel. And you know, I'm not convinced that that would make much of a difference. Uh, someone did say to me the other week that once these things go wrong, they're almost impossible to get going again, which find hard to uh, accept and believe really but uh, the evidence does seem to support that certainly uh, in my experience here as you've seen so a few people have suggested replacing it entirely with one of the branded um, models the sort of ever spasher or something like that but uh, the budget really just isn't there for that at the moment uh, I could try another Chinese heater. Um, this was pretty much the cheapest one I could find. I paid £60 for this one so perhaps I did cheap out a little bit too much. I know there are some brands that people recommend from China in the sort of 100 to £150 pound mark which could be a possibility but uh, I think for the moment I'm going to leave it. Um, I do have the option of course I've got the cutout and the turret plate and everything there ready to receive another heater but uh, yeah the site we're away on over Christmas does have electric hookups so we can use a little fan heater and uh, we've got nothing particular planned um, for next year but of course we are hoping to go away quite a bit but we may have to limit ourselves to uh, sites with electric hookup for the moment because uh, we're not going to have any usable heating in the van otherwise uh, it's a bit of a shame. I, I was really hoping that we'd be able to crack this. I don't really like having to give up on it, but uh, yeah, I do feel like I've devoted an awful lot of time to trying to get this going. And I think I've really followed up on everyone's suggestions and sort of crossed everything off the list. I know you can buy new burner units. I suppose that is something I could do as well, but I don't know. I'm <laughs> I'm not feeling particularly inclined to it at the moment, but uh, we'll see, we'll see. Anyway, thank you for watching. Sorry it didn't reach um, a good conclusion, but uh, never mind. We will see you on the next one, no doubt.